Hello, Richard here. Now, did you know that back in the day, the size of an inch was different depending on which part of the globe you were on? Now, it wasn't to do with the shape of the Earth or gravity or anything like that, uh, but the actual reason might surprise you a little bit. You see, back in the 1860s in the USA, the size of an inch was actually based on the metric system. Yeah, I know. Bear with me on this one. And in Britain, the inch was based on the imperial system, specifically the imperial standard yard. Now, the thing is, in the USA, by an act of government, the inch was based on the length of a metre, and they decreed that they're 39.37 inches in the metre. So that meant that the US inch converted over to 25.4000508 millimetres, whereas the British inch, that came in at 25.399977 millimetres. Now, that's only a difference of about 0.07 of a micron, which is 0.07 of a thousandth of a millimetre, or about three millionths of an inch. So not too much to worry about, really. And it probably didn't affect very much back in the 1900s, because there probably wasn't that much import and export between the USA and Britain, not least of super precision engineering. Yeah, back then, most precision engineering would be down to a thousandth of an inch or a few hundredths of a millimetre. Um, maybe on super precise stuff, they'd go down to ten thousandths of an inch. But they wouldn't really have been doing a lot of work down to millionths of an inch and certainly not importing and exporting between countries. So it didn't really matter too much. So consider that a lot of engineering back in the Victorian period would have been done with uh, rulers and chalk and uh, just making things to fit each other. So the fact that the inch varies slightly didn't really matter. As long as everyone used the same inch, they were fine. However, it did present a problem to a talented Swedish engineer called Carl Edward Johansson. Uh, Mr. Johansson is credited with the invention of the gauge block, and he got a patent for that in 1901. And uh, this is a gauge block here. So it's a precision piece of metal. They're not always metal. Sometimes they're ceramic these days. Uh, but it's basically a precision block of metal. This one's a 25 millimeter one. And it's 25 millimeters on this dimension. And it's accurate. This one's accurate to within plus zero and minus uh, 0.11 microns. So these are incredibly precise. And these do actually go down to millionths of an inch of accuracy. So that presented Carl Edward Johansson with a bit of a problem. What size does he make his gauge blocks? Does he make an inch gauge block to the USA size, or does he make it to the British size? Now, by an act of simplistic genius, Johansson decided he just simply split the difference, and he'd call the inch 25.4 millimetres. So that was within a few millionths either way. So Johansson's definition of the inch at 25.4 millimetres, that became known as the industrial inch, and that was widely adopted throughout the world. And in fact, in 1959, through the International Yard and Pound Agreement, the inch became officially defined as 25.4 millimetres, in other words, the size we know it as today. So that's the time they changed the size of an inch. By the way, if anybody ever tells you there's 40,000 to a millimetre, then they're not being entirely accurate with you. <laughs>